Hey guys, we are starting on light. This video will be on the properties of light, right? So in this video, there will be quite a number of terms that you will need to familiarize yourself with. New terms, so that you need to know the meaning of the terms, what exactly do they mean, and how to use them. Okay, let's start with properties of light, right? Uh, visible light, okay? Otherwise, just we just call it light, okay? It's a member of this electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, uh, electromagnetic spectrum, and this is a family of transverse wave with very similar properties. Okay, electromagnetic spectrum, we have members, we have members like uh, gamma. Okay, we have members like infrared. Okay, and then uh, ultraviolet to name a few. Okay, so this. Uh, these are all members. Uh, visible light is one of the many members, the seven members of the electromagnetic spectrum. Transverse wave, what do we mean by transverse wave? Let's say that there is a water wave. Okay, so water wave go up and down, up and down, up and down. All right. And then uh, you'll see that this water wave, let's say it moves like that. Okay. So when it moves like that, right, we say that the wave motion is in this direction. Okay, we can kind of see that it is the, the wave, right, move towards the right. Okay, so the wave move to the right, then let's look at the water particles. Each of the water particles, right, this one is moving up and down only. Okay, it only moves up and down, it doesn't move to the right. This thing also. Okay, this another water particle is also moving at that. Even the water particles here are moving up and down only. Even the water particles in the water are moving up and down only. Okay, so when this happens, right, this type of wave, we call it transverse wave. Okay, where the particles move perpendicular to the wave motion. I repeat, the particles move perpendicularly to the wave motion okay so other than being a transverse wave okay uh, there are some properties of light that you need to know light is a form of energy it travels at a very specific speed in vacuum okay you need to know this number uh, 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second okay and on top of everything it does not require a medium means that light can move through a vacuum. Okay, light can move through a vacuum. Okay, next, new terms here. Ray, beam. What is a ray, what is a beam? First of all, remember that light travels in straight lines. Okay, light always travels in straight lines. Okay, the path is called a light ray. Okay. And we represent it using a straight arrow. Okay, since they travel in straight lines, right? So the path will be straight, and that's why we use a straight arrow. A beam, on the other hand, okay, is made out of countless rays. I stress countless rays. Okay, and uh, we only represent it using a few straight lines. All right, why? Uh, it doesn't make sense that I go and draw 50 arrows to represent a beam, right? Okay, so I represent I only draw three to represent three million light rays. Okay. Okay, so these are three different types of beams. Okay, I have a divergent beam, as the name suggests, it diverges, right? So it spreads out. Okay, and then I have a conversion beam. It converges, it gathers at a point, okay, or being focused. And then after that, I have a parallel beam. Parallel beam is when the rays are parallel, okay. Uh, extra note here, right? If the beam is from a, very, a point very, very long, very far away, okay, the beams, are, the rays are going to be parallel to each other approximately okay it's like you know the angle between them is like 90 89.9999 degrees right so 
um, they are as good as Pilot. Okay, so this point is going to be very important. If it's from a point far away, okay, you have a parallel beam. Okay, point far away, object far away, parallel beam. Okay, next we talk about luminous objects and non luminous objects. All right, so luminous objects and non luminous objects. Luminous objects. Uh, produce light okay of course they don't produce light because light is a form of energy i need to take the energy from somewhere else okay they actually convert other forms of energy into light energy okay so i have things that give off light the sun stars fire okay fireflies light bulb filament okay not every part of the light bulb give off light only the filament part give off light and then we have you know TV screen, LED, and things like that. All right. Um, we see luminous objects because light they produce enter our eyes. This is important. If they produce light but don't enter our eyes, we still cannot see them. Okay. On the other hand, non-luminous objects, right? They do not produce light. Almost every other thing is a non-luminous object, right? So even uh, mirrors, right? even reflective surfaces, they do not produce light. What they do is that they reflect light, okay? When they reflect light, okay, uh, and then enter our eyes, we see them, okay? Okay, now, what if light gets blocked? When lights get blocked, right? Okay, by opaque objects. Okay, because opaque objects do not allow light to pass through. Right? When they pass through an opaque object, we see a shadow. Right? A shadow is a region that light does not fall on. Okay. Uh, and what is a sharp shadow? A sharp shadow, right, is from a point source of light. In other words, a very small source of light. Let's say I have a very small light bulb, and then I have an object here, okay, this triangle. So what happens, right, is that light rays, okay, are going to come out from the from my light bulb in all directions, okay. Some of them is able to go onto the piece of paper. Some of them get blocked by my triangle, and then cannot fall on the paper and what happens there is a hole in the paper like that okay and this hole is the shadow okay when the point source when the light source is big okay when the light source is big right okay like let's say the sun okay a very big light source okay we imagine that this is a point source and it gives off light in all directions Okay, so some of them is going to fall on Earth, and this is daytime. Okay, and then if the moon so happens to be in the path, all right, the light gets blocked, and then a shadow forms on Earth. Earth is like the piece of paper right now. Okay, and the moon is the triangle object. Okay, so. I have a small shadow on the object, so the shadow is here. Okay, you see the kind of the blue dot here, All right? And that is the shadow formed by the blue side of the sun. Let's say there's another point, a red point on the object, and it, of course it gives off light in all directions as well, All right? So some of the light is able to fall onto the earth, All right? And that side will be able to see the sun, All right? And it's daytime. This part that gets blocked by the moon will also form a shadow. Okay, so this shadow here, right, is what we call a solar eclipse, a phenomena where the sun gets blocked, and when it get blocked, it block is get blocked by the sun by by the moon, right? Uh, yeah, right. So there will be a point 
you if you look at the diagram closely, you will see a point very very dark in the center, right? That is the point where all parts of the sun gets blocked by the moon. Okay, even if you have a big light source, all right, it is possible to block out the whole thing when the object blocking it is quite close to the screen, the piece of paper, all right? And then you see this very dark dot here. This is the point where you have total eclipse, all right? And if you are part of the shadow but not in the very black point, you see a partial eclipse, okay? Okay, next, when the light falls onto an object, I can have multiple things happening at the same time. Remember, one or more of the three can occur, not only one, all right? You, most of the time, it's more than one. First of all, reflection, okay? Light bounce off, okay? When it bounce off, it stays in the same medium, all right? And it notably, it doesn't only occur with a mirror. It most surfaces will reflect light. Okay. Like let's say I have a table. Okay. So light from let's say a light bulb. Okay. Light falls onto the table and goes into my eye. Right? That is how I can see the table. Right? The table surface reflected light, even though the table is not mirror or glass or any reflective surface. Okay. Next, we have transmission. Right? So transmission it travels into the medium. Okay. So when does the light travel into the medium when it is transparent or translucent? So light will fall onto the surface. This is, let's say, air. This is glass. All right. You will travel in. Okay. And then after that, of course, it will go out again. Okay. This is transmission. It kind of um, go through the glass. Okay. Transparent and translucent objects. Right, there will be some reflection as well. All right, it is possible that it gets reflected. Okay, a little bit of the light gets reflected. Okay, this is why you can see your reflection in a pit in a plane of glass as well. All right. Next, we have absorption. Okay, absorption when light is absorbed. When light is absorbed, it is not reflected or transmitted. Okay, again. It can be absorbed and reflected at the same time, right? So let's say that this one, okay? Let's say this is brightness of five units, okay? And then the table absorbs a little bit. It absorbs 0 0.1 unit of light, okay? And therefore, the rest is being reflected. So 0 0.4.9, 4.9 units go into my eye. Okay. Yeah. So for this one, maybe some of it will be absorbed as well. Again, absorb occurs in all surfaces, right? So light hits the glass. Some of it, let's say this is five units of energy. Maybe about zero, one unit gets reflected. Okay. 0 0.1 gets absorbed and then I will have some left, let's say this is 3.9 units okay, of energy, right? Okay, so that's for the properties of light, okay? Make sure that you understand the new vocab words and know how to use them.